Have you heard? Will dietary lysine control feline herpes virus infections? Infectious upper respiratory disease is a staggering problem anywhere cats are housed together. The most common infectious agents are feline herpes virus, feline calice virus, and Chlamydophila felis. Of these pathogens, feline herpes virus is the most common and causes the most severe disease. After being infected with herpes virus, approximately 80% of cats become lifetime carriers and a source of infection for other cats. Furthermore, the efficacy of vaccination is not known in this population of previously infected animals. Some positive data suggests that lysine may have antiviral effects against feline herpes virus. Several studies evaluated the effects of giving bolus doses of lysine to cats either exposed to experimental herpes virus or cats in environments enzootic for feline herpes virus. Twice daily bolus dosing decreased the likelihood of developing an infection in a laboratory setting. However, once daily bolus dosing, while consistently raising serum lysine concentrations, did not reduce the disease risk and even increased disease severity and virus detection. Twice a day bolusing is not practical in most settings because it is time consuming, stresses the cats, and could even increase infection rates if the pathogens are transferred from cat to cat by handlers. Recently, a team of researchers from the School of Veterinary Medicine at the University of California, Davis, studied the effects of dietary lysine supplementation on a group of shelter cats over a four week period. The goal was twofold to determine the effect on the development of infectious upper respiratory disease and the rate of detection of Chlamydophila felis, feline calice virus, and feline herpes virus infections. The study was conducted at an animal shelter. The cats were included in the study if they were negative for FIV antibody and FELV antigen and deemed healthy and over six months of age by the shelter staff. Body weight and approximate age were recorded, and each cat was scored as to its level of nasal or ocular disease. Once entered into the study, plasma lysine and arginine concentrations were obtained, and specific pathogen nucleic acid tests were performed on ocular and oropharyngeal swabs. The cats were divided into two groups with equal sex and disease score distributions. While a few cats were positive initially for some of the respiratory pathogens, they were low in number and divided between the two groups. There was no significant difference between the groups at the beginning of the study with regard to plasma, arginine, or lysine concentrations. One group of cats was fed a diet supplemented with lysine, while the other was fed the same food without supplementation. The cats were examined three times a week by the same individuals, and repeat swabs were taken once a week. During the fourth week, the plasma amino acid concentrations were reevaluated. At four weeks, the cats receiving supplementation did show significantly increased plasma concentrations of lysine, while arginine concentrations remained constant in both groups. Cats in both groups that were healthy, having low clinical disease scores at the initiation of the study, were equally likely to develop mild disease during the four-week period, and there was no difference in the time of disease onset. However, the healthy cats in the treatment group were more likely to develop moderate or severe disease than those in the control group. Interestingly, for those cats with higher disease scores at the start of the study, there were no significant differences in the recovery rates of the control and supplemented groups. Additionally, feline herpes virus was detected on conjunctival swabs more commonly in the cats receiving supplementation. Detection of the other pathogens did not differ between the two groups, and they were identified in very low numbers. These results suggest that dietary lysine supplementation may actually intensify clinical signs and increase detection of feline herpes virus infection. There are certainly discrepancies between previous lysine bolus data and this study evaluating dietary supplementation. The plasma lysine concentrations achieved here were lower than those in the twice daily bolus research, and a critical concentration may be required to achieve antiviral effects. Arginine, which is important for immune function, did not decrease during the study and therefore does not provide an explanation for the increase in disease severity seen in the supplemented animals. This study did confirm that feline herpes virus is the most common and severe of the infectious respiratory disease pathogens affecting shelter cats and remains a constant concern for cat populations. Further research is necessary to determine if lysine dose or other variables are critical factors in decreasing infection rate and disease severity. So for the time being, quarantining of infected animals and the use of antiviral agents and vaccination are the best control methods available. Infectious upper respiratory disease in cats remains one of the most common reasons for euthanasia in shelters. It is hoped that continued research will uncover a more effective method of preventing and controlling these persistent viral infections.